All right, perfect. Um, yeah, thanks, Jonas, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Teresa. I'll be talking today on our position paper, Tensions Between the Proxies of Human Values in AI. This was work with a few collaborators, Daniel Nassani, Max Semblist, Akash Khanna, Haley Massa, and John Dickerson. All right, uh, let's jump in. So to preface our discussion, um, do, do, do. Awesome. To preface our discussion, we are uh, setting the framework of uh, our paper is focusing on three key pillars of human values in AI. So we have fairness as often formalized via demographic parity, equalized opportunity, equalized odds, calibration of groups, et cetera. We have privacy as often formalized via differential privacy, a probabilistic guarantee that a model will, um, machine learning model will perform the same if a single data point is removed or replaced. And uh, finally, we have transparency. This can look like using inherently interpretable methods as we heard about this morning, or using black box models and then relying on post hoc explanations through techniques like Lime, SHAP, and many others. I'm sure we're very familiar. Um, okay, and so to provide a quick synopsis of our work, we examined the current technical formalisms for embedding fairness, privacy, and model transparency, and how they fall short. They carry their own inherent tensions, as well as additional tensions that arise when multiple pillars are employed. These value pillars also suffer from a lack of awareness of the context in which the technology is being implemented, and we find that this is fundamentally concerning because context is the material that maps decisions to consequences. Um, we cannot continue to rely on these mathematical formalizations to avoid grappling with the real world impact of technology. And so we push for greater emphasis on contextual considerations. All right, let's jump in. So in our piece, we identify three categories of tensions that are, arise as a result of our choice of formalizations. We have the tensions that arise within each value pillar, the tensions with operationalizing multiple value pillars, and finally, the tensions with the real world context of deployment. So let's dive into the first category of tensions. These are the tensions within each value pillar um, and the inherent inconsistencies that arise through the current use of formalizations. So as an example, current fairness definitions are unable to be simultaneously enforced in the same machine learning model um, because different notions target different definitions of fairness. Further, sometimes interventions for fairness might actually harm instead of help the underserved groups that they seek to help. And finally, fairness is not a formula. What can we learn from philosophers and sociologists who have been thinking and contemplating about what it means to be fair and equitable for much longer than we have? When we look towards privacy, we notice that definitions of differential privacy can often be limited in practice in terms of the types of data that they can handle. And they're often incompatible with other non-technical public understandings of what it means to be private in terms of data. When we look towards transparency, post hoc explanations in general have been a bit controversial and have been considered by some to be an inherent fiction for black boxes. And further, data scientists are human and we suffer from confirmation bias. That means that we can be over trusted or misled by post hoc explanations. All right, so moving towards the second category of tensions that we identify, these are the tensions that result um, from the compounded uh, impossibility of fully operationalizing multiple value pillars. So sometimes implementing one pillar can cause tensions with the others. For instance, uh, fairness and privacy, oh, 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 the slide has not updated. Okay, awesome. For instance, implementing privacy measures can make achieving fairness more difficult, and privacy can also negatively impact minority communities, as evidenced by the real world example of the use of differential privacy in the 2020 census. 
Between privacy and model transparency, model transparency and access to post hoc explanations exacerbates the risk of privacy attacks. And privacy uh, in general can be fun in fundamental conflict with the goals of transparency. Privacy can be seen as an information concealer, transparency as an information illuminator. Between transparency and fairness, explainers should be useful for identifying unfairness, and they're often thought to be so, but they're actually not great indicators of unfairness. And the explanations themselves can be unfair. Awesome. So beyond these technical compatibilities, we raise fundamental concern over the framings of these concepts. Um, specifically, our mathematical formalizations of these concepts have deceived us into believing that the morality of a technology is a measurable contract. So while we can achieve a 100% score on demographic parity, there's no such thing as an ethics score that we can achieve at 100%. And in fact, in our communal endeavor of codifying um, these proxies for human values, we fail to properly acknowledge that there's no universally agreed upon set of moral human values. Rather, calculating these notions through mathematical proofs and technical formulas has deceived us into believing that we can avoid this um, and other complexities of reality under the veil of scientific objectivity. Uh, these choices can actually only be properly evaluated when considering them within their context of deployment, which is something that we argue is fundamentally lacking within the field. We define context in this setting as um, the setting as in which a technology is to be deployed. So think the social, political, historical, um, financial, and other factors that are play in each setting. But how can this context-based evaluation be properly completed when alarmingly every discussed definition in every pillar is domain agnostic? Every mathematical formulation um, does not take into account any specific aspects under the, of the context under which it's being utilized. Assuming the same fundamental property should be optimized no matter the situation ignores the complicated na nature of reality. And to elaborate on this a little bit more, just because the same property can be calculated in every scenario doesn't mean it should be optimized in every scenario. This is described in literature as the portability trap. We must examine the ramifications of our choices in context, and we can't absolve ourselves of grappling with societal impacts in our technical silos and implementing whatever popular technical definition um, is popular. Context is the material that maps decisions to consequences. All right, so at this point in the presentation, I need to acknowledge that this is not new or novel. Um, more developed areas of ethics have already relied on contextual considerations. Fields like biomedical ethics, medical ethics, et cetera, are already built on contextual considerations. So for example, the types of patient information a doctor has access to are different depending on their physical context. Are they in a hospital uh, waiting to, um, speak to a patient or are they in their car on the way to the hospital um, further uh, mechanisms uh, like digital ph physiological function monitoring have different legal considerations depending on their context as well is it for a patient who's in the icu or is it for the mass surveillance of um, many many people uh, on a daily basis um, for digital phenotyping And um, the field of STS or socio-technical frameworks can be looked towards to find parallels to our pre-existing value pillars. So for fairness, we can look towards substantive algorithmic fairness. Um, this is a framework for identifying structural responses for embedding fairness and analyzing the hierarchies and institutional structures that surround particular decision points. For privacy, we can look towards contextual integrity. 
This defines privacy as the appropriate flow of information where what's appropriate entirely depends on the context. And it involves identifying who the stakeholders involved in the flow of information are, what types of information are being transmitted, and many other contextual considerations. For transparency, we can look towards uh, making sure that we employ use case specific methods. Um, this means first understanding what types of transparency are useful and relevant and in each situation and acknowledge how this answer can also change for different stakeholders within the same situation. Um, and then using appropriate forms of transparency that should be designed according to these situational needs and evaluating through use case studies. This is already often the norm in medical domains as well. So we've provided, awesome. We've provided some precedent. Uh, we've discussed potential paths forward, but we're also going to uh, showcase some of the um, work that we thought on on open questions for future directions on actually implementing some of these recommendations. So the first is um, thinking a little bit more deeply about what modeling assumptions we all hold that aren't justly reflecting reality. So uh, most fairness work, for instance, considers a static world. You have one population being passed through one model and one time period. And this morning we heard a little bit of dynamical work, but how can we think about these assumptions and think about the world uh, more dynamically? Uh, in addition, most fairness work either considers privilege as a binary or along one axis in a very siloed fashion. Um, but how can we uh, consider the nuances of, of humanity uh, beyond uh, these siloed realms? Um, what types of tools need to be developed? Can we take inspiration from pre-existing checklists or uh, model cards or other uh, specific types of uh, tooling framework? And how should machine learning systems respond to context? How much of this should be automatic? How much manual? Um, and finally, what aspects of ethical responsibility does each stakeholder carry? So machine learning pipelines involve a variety of stakeholders and a variety of organizations. How do the roles of a model owner, a table labeler, a business executive, how do each of those roles defer and how much contextual consideration they should be um, considering? There is urgency in addressing our failures and properly understanding the consequences of our current formalizations in machine learning systems. Um, technology is inherently value-laden, it's implicitly political, and thus we must also recognize that it's not always the solution. Um, we cannot continue to use these mathematical formalizations to avoid grappling with the real world impacts of technology and we must implement contextually aware technical interventions for true accountability. Um, thank you so much. I'm happy to answer any questions.